All right, here we are. We've made it to our last video of the semester. Our last video of the course, we're going to talk a bit more about use substitution in the context of what I'm going to call turnaround problems. I don't know if that's a formally defined or, or consistently used phrase, but I like it to describe these types of issues. Uh, what we're going to answer the, is what happens when our integrals aren't set up correctly for use substitution, but specifically we're going to look at this kind of incorrect setup. When we try and do our u substitution, there are extra variables in our integrand, and what that means is like there are x's that don't belong as a part of the u part that we substituted or the derivative of those u's, the du part that we substitute. If you've got extra x's floating around, how do we deal with those? And we're going to use this turnaround example idea. Here's the main idea. When we do a substitution, we normally have some function of x that we pick, right? u equals f of x. And then we set du to be f prime of dx just by the definition of differentials. And what we'll notice is that as long as f is 1 to 1, then we can invert that function. We can solve this for x by just using the inverse. What I mean by that is if we have like u equals x plus 1, this is pretty easy to just write x equals u minus 1. We can solve for the other variable here. So this turnaround name refers to the fact that we switch our variables in our substitution. We turn the u substitution equation around. But there's also some other nice visuals that go along with this. So this will be helpful for us to get a rule on how to substitute out the extra variables. Remember, that's the problem that we're running into. We have extra variables in the integrand. If we turn this u substitution formula, that equation around for x, solve it for x, then we have a rule that writes those x's in terms of u's. So let's take a look at an example. This is a, a nice example because sometimes it pump fakes students into doing some stuff. A lot of times students will look at this and they'll initially say like, oh, let's just do the distributive property, right? Just multiply this out. But look at this. This exponent of 7 says, nope, we can't do that. If you were going to do this, you'd have to write x cubed times x squared minus 1 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 times x squared minus 1. And yes, I did count those out with my fingers just to make sure I had seven copies of them. And then you could multiply all of that out. It sounds awful. I don't want to do that. You can. You can use a binomial theorem to multiply x squared minus 1 seven times, and it's actually not that terrible. You'll get some big polynomial here that ends up being okay to integrate. But if we want to do u substitution, because look at this. It's nice and composed. x squared minus 1 is in this power function. Let's just do u substitution. u equals x squared minus 1. All right, we're pretty familiar with this. dx, that, oops, sorry, du, then, that's going to be 2x dx. You'll notice that we've got a copy of x. Maybe I'll just rewrite this so we can see it. This is x squared times x, maybe I'll put the x squared over here. There we go. x times x squared times x squared minus 1 dx. And if we want to do our u substitution now, we'll notice like, oh, we're missing that coefficient of 2. No big deal. We know how to do that. There it is. All right, so now we'll go ahead and just label everything. This here, oops, I forgot my exponent of 7. That's important. This here is u, and the 2x dx together make du. So our new integral is half times the integral of x squared that didn't get substituted, u to the 7 dx. And so this is our problem, right? There's these extra x's floating around. So what you can do is solve for x and go ahead from there. We'll say, all right, let's go ahead and solve this thing. What I'm going to notice is that I really don't need to solve for x. I could, I could say, you know, x squared equals u plus 1, and so x is positive or negative, the square root of u plus 1. And depending on the domain that we're using for the x values on the limits of integration, if we have them, we could use positive or negative, and that gets tricky. So this technically isn't a one-to-one -one function. But wait a second. Let's just switch out for x squared. x squared is u plus 1. So you sometimes don't even have to have this one-to-oneness if you have extra copies of x's. Like if you have multiple versions of them, you can find a way to substitute out this x squared. x squared is really u plus 1. So suddenly, this becomes half times the integral 
of u plus 1 times u to the 7. Oops, and I put dx here. That's supposed to be a du there. All right. Now, this is still a product of things. We can't integrate this nicely directly. But look at this. Remember how we wanted to do the distributive property right off the bat? We can now. So this is another reason why I like to call this a turnaround problem. Because it takes these problems where like, oh, the exponent is on this binomial and we can't multiply into that now. And it turns it around. Now the exponent is on the single term. We can multiply that inside of this little binomial. So this becomes half integral of u to the 8 plus u to the 7 du. And this is super easy to anti-differentiate, right? Add 1 to your exponents, divide by that number. So this becomes half times u to the 9 over 9 plus u to the 8 over 8 plus c. Or we can say half, well, maybe I'll say um, x squared minus 1 raised to the 9. I'm just going to multiply the half through there. So it's going to be over 18 plus x squared minus 1 to the 8 over 16. Again, all I did was multiply the half plus c. Isn't that slick? That works out really nicely. So you can still do some tinkering to find the extra pieces in your integrand to substitute out. This is the essence of turnaround problems, these turnaround examples. We just tinker with the u-substitution equation, solve for x or a function of x like x squared, if we wouldn't have that in there, and do a nice little substitution that way. Here's another example. We'll notice that this division is really hard. We can't really do anything with this. But we probably have this nice intuition that says, well, hey, grab this x plus 1 as u. u equals x plus 1. And then du, well, this is actually really easy. That's just dx, perfect. So this is u. There's du. But notice, we didn't touch this x squared. So when we substitute things, we've got x squared times u to the negative half du. And that's kind of frustrating, right? We would love to have swapped all that stuff over. But now look, we can solve this for x. x is really u minus 1. And so what's x squared? Well, it's u minus 1 squared. So we'll say, all right, integral of u minus 1 squared. And maybe I'll put that back in the denominator over u to the half. Cool. Now what you can do is a couple of different things. You can maybe multiply all that stuff out. Oh, I forgot my du. There we go. We can multiply all that stuff out. So we have u squared minus 2u plus 1 over u to the half du. And now what you'll notice is we've got this nice upside down triangle thing, a bunch of terms over a single denominator. Let's split that fraction up. Let's make this two fraction or three fractions. Oh my goodness, look at all these terms. This is u squared over u to the half. We'll reduce that in a second. Minus 2u over u to the half. We'll reduce that in a second. Plus 1 over u to the half. We'll write that as u to the negative half in a second. And there we go. What you could also notice is that you could have left this as u to the negative half. And then instead of splitting up a fraction, you're multiplying across everything. It's going to end up being the same thing because you're still going to end up with an exponent of 2 minus a half. That's 3 halves minus u over u to the half. Well, that's going to be an exponent of half plus u to the negative half du. And from here, I'm running out of room, but hopefully you can see how from here you're going to be adding 1 to your exponents and dividing by that. So I'll add 1 to 3 halves, and that becomes 5 halves. Instead of dividing by 5 halves, I'm going to multiply by 2 fifths. Same thing. Add 1 to my exponent. That becomes 3 halves. And now I'm going to divide by 3 halves, which is really multiplying by 2 thirds. So this is 4 thirds u to the 3 halves. And then I'm going to add 1 to my exponent. That's half. Instead of dividing by a half, I'm going to multiply by 2. So this is 2 u to the half plus c. And now when we substitute everything back to x, we get... 2 fifths times x plus 1 to the 5 halves minus 4 thirds times x plus 1 to the 3 halves plus 2 x plus 1 
to the half plus c. You could write that as a square root if you want. You could write all these things with the square roots and exponents, but there we go. That works out pretty nicely then. Wait a second. Isn't this the same example? Redo? What? Let's go ahead and do another version of this and see how this goes. All right. Are you ready? This will work out pretty nicely for us. So we have an alternate version that we can do here. What we can do is instead of picking u equals x plus 1, we can go ahead and pick something else. Let's do something like this. Oops. Let's pick u equals the square root of x plus 1. Now, instead of finding du, I'm going to do something else completely. I'm going to solve this for x right away. I'm going to say, okay, what this means is that u squared equals x plus 1, so that means x equals u squared minus 1. Cool. So this part in the bottom, that whole thing with the square root becomes u. I can see, wait a second, x squared, that's u squared minus 1, squared. But I still need to substitute out the differential. Let's substitute it with a dx equals 2u du, right? By the definition of differentials, the differential of x, if x is a function of u, is the derivative of u squared minus 1 times du. So that's what I'm going to do to swap out this. So what I end up with now is an integral of x squared, that's u squared minus 1 squared, let me make that exponent a little clearer there, over u times dx, which is 2u du. Here's my integral. Okay, we can do some cancellation here, right? x, or, or sorry, u over u. So this is really, maybe I'll pull the coefficient of 2 right out. This is really u squared minus 1 squared du. I can multiply that stuff out. That's u to the 4 minus 2u squared plus 1 du. And now I can anti-differentiate. That's going to be 2 times u to the 5th over 5 minus 2u cubed over 3 plus u plus c. And now I'll do my substitution. I'm going to put that square root back in place of u, and I'm going to have 2 times, maybe I'll say 2 fifths. I'll multiply all my 2's in here. This is uh, 2 fifths times u to the fifth. So that's the square root of x plus 1 raised to the fifth. Notice that's really an exponent of 5 halves. Minus 4 thirds, again, multiplying the 2 in here, square root of x plus 1 cubed, that's really an exponent of 3 halves, plus 2 square root x plus 1 plus c. And isn't that the same thing that we had earlier, right? Don't those answers match up? Well, that's pretty nice. So we got a couple of different versions that we can do here. The moral of the story is don't get so locked into like one algorithmic way of integrating things with some substitution that you notice. You can be a little bit clever and tricky here. The problem is that you need some decent intuition to do it. And so get some practice on these things. Don't feel like you have to do all the clever stuff all the time. You can always just say, all right, I noticed composition. That's what I'm going to really work. But you can do some nice things sometimes with this substitution. All right, another example. Let me just leave this one with you for now. Give you an honest attempt at this without me kind of holding the training wheels on. Um, and we'll see how this goes. So give this a shot. See if you can find a nice U substitution for this. You are going to have to do some turnaround stuff. Hopefully that's helpful to see. Um, and we'll probably look at a couple of different versions of doing this. Are you ready? Should we do it? All right. U is x squared minus 1. That seems to be the obvious pick, right? Because it's in that denominator. We noticed in the last video that we can really write that as an exponent of negative 1. And then we know we're going to get some logs and blah, blah, blah. Du, what's that? That's 2x dx. All right, so I'm going to take this x cubed and split it up, right? So I'm going to say x cubed, this is really x times x squared over x squared minus 1 dx. And now I can put my 2 in here and my half out front. 
this part and the differential together make du. This part makes u. And so what's the part that we're missing? Oh, it's x squared. Again, we can say, oh, look at this. x squared equals u plus 1, just like we did earlier, right? So this feels hopefully pretty familiar. When we do our substitution now, we've got half times our integral. The 2x dx is over here, oops, with my du. We have some division by u. But now notice our numerator is u plus 1. How do we anti-differentiate this? Well, what we'll notice again is that we can do this really nice split, right? So this is really half times, we'll split that fraction up. We have u over u. That's 1, right? We're looking at these two things over each other. And then we also have these two things over each other. Cool. Well, this is pretty easy. Our antiderivative of 1, what's that? And don't say x. It's not x. What is it here? Our variable is u, right? So the antiderivative of 1 with regard to u is u plus the natural log of u plus c. So again, we can go ahead and swap back, take this x squared minus 1 and put it all in place, and we've got half x squared minus 1 plus half natural log x squared minus 1, oops, plus c. Uh, sometimes you'll see it written this way. And that's because when you multiply this out, there's really uh, half x squared minus half, but then this minus half is just like a part of the constant. So we can just wrap it up into there. So sometimes you'll see it that way. So just be a little bit careful when you're writing things. It's fine if you want to write it in this first way with the half x squared minus 1 on there with constants in your um, antiderivative. But sometimes you'll see people remove those and just wrap them up into that plus c constant of integration. Um, and that works out really, really nicely. So hopefully that worked out okay. Let's redo this. Let's do this again. There's a couple ways that you can think about this. I'll show you one more. I'll give you a hint on a different one if you want. Here's another hint. x cubed over x squared minus 1. We can rewrite that, right? We have a polynomial with a bigger degree in the top over a polynomial with a smaller degree in the bottom. So why not do long division here? Why not just do the long division with polynomials, rewrite this out as some sort of like, it's probably going to be x plus something, some remainder, right? x cubed minus x squared, that's x. And then there'll be some other remainder on here. So go ahead and do that if you want. But I'm going to show you a different way of doing this. It's essentially the same thing. And I'm going to say, all right, I want to divide this, and I am going to divide by factoring. So I'm going to find a common factor here. And you're like, wait a second, what? How do we find a common factor? Well, what I want to do is I want to factor out x squared minus 1. If I was going to do that, wouldn't it be great if this was x cubed minus x over x squared minus 1? dx, because then look at that, this x cubed minus x, I can call x times x squared minus 1, and then I'll be able to cancel stuff. Oh, that's so great. But like, wait a second, can't just subtract x, but I can if I add it as well. Ooh, here we go. We're getting a little tricky now. So what I'm going to do is just subtract x and add x here. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to factor and get x squared minus 1 in the numerator as a factor. Now, I can only kind of do that. So again, I'm going to write this as x cubed minus x plus x all over x squared minus 1 dx so that I can factor out an x from the first two terms like this. And now, let's just split that fraction up. So I'm going to write this as x plus x over x squared minus 1 dx. That's exactly what you would have gotten if you did the long division. Doesn't it make sense that like division really is factoring and canceling and 
Those are the same thing, right? So this is just a different way of doing division of polynomials. Sometimes it works out really nicely to do. Sometimes it's kind of hard to do this. And so the long division algorithm is sometimes really nice for adding structure to difficult to see problems. But if you can just like factor something and figure out what the thing that you need to offset is, that's really the remainder, right? That's what that's representing. I'm not going to go into more detail here, but that's something that we can do. Now, what we'll notice is that I'll break this into two integrals, x dx plus the integral of x over x squared minus 1 dx, because this first one is an easy one. There's our x squared over 2, right? That's our half x squared term at the front. And this one is not too hard, but we have to do a u substitution on it. Pick the denominator to be u, x squared minus 1. du then is 2x dx, so we're going to go ahead and say put a 2 up there and a half out front. And then we end up with, um, I'll say half x squared, that's my first integral, plus, and I'll deal with the constant at the very end, half integral of 1 over u du. And again, there's like a plus c out here, but there's going to be another one anyways. That's half natural log of u, which is half natural log of x squared minus 1. So half x squared plus half natural log of x squared minus 1 plus our constant of integration. That's the exact same thing that we had over here. In this one, we used a u substitution of x squared minus 1, and then we did some turnaround stuff, right, and split a fraction up. In this one, we split the fraction up first, and then we only had to do u substitution on part of it. It's equivalent. It doesn't really matter what you do. Um, but hopefully that's helpful to show you a couple of things. First, the turnaround stuff, right? solving your u substitution for x. We didn't have to do that in this second case. What, that's something that you should notice. In this version of it, we did. But over here, we did not have to do that. If we split that fraction up, we did the division first. Uh, but that turnaround process is a helpful one. It's an important one. Um, we can manipulate our u substitutions and kind of solve those for other variables or functions of those variables, like when we solved for x squared. Um, and that works out really nicely. Also, Hopefully you see that there's multiple ways of doing these. There's multiple ways of thinking about this. Don't try and get kind of like lined up into one specific way of thinking because there's plenty of different tricks and strategies. That's a really great thing because it allows us to be creative when we're solving this and kind of follow paths that make sense to us that follow our own intuition. But it's also sometimes frustrating because if you look at multiple different resources for things, you're going to see a ton of different methods, which is great except... It can be sometimes tricky if you're really just trying to focus on the basics to see nine different ways of doing something when really you just want to see one clear-cut way. So be careful about that. If you're really looking at some basic stuff, try not to spiral out of control too much and look at a ton of different resources because they might have some different methodologies, and that can be sometimes confusing when you're still trying to figure out the basics. As you get comfortable with those basics, though, definitely find those other resources that show you different ways of thinking so that you can find things that are intuitive to you. Hopefully that's helpful. That's it that we have. That's everything you need to know about integration. <laughs> <laughs> Not actually, no. There's so much more integration stuff that we need to know. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and if you take uh, the second semester of calculus, a whole chunk of that course is dedicated to integration. There are so many nuances and so many different methods and so many different ways that we'll think about that. When you take that course, which is a really fun course, take it. Or if you just look at the videos that I've got on integration, um, what you'll see is that we can go over examples that we could have done this semester, but we just don't have the time to put up all these different ways of thinking about things. There's so many little algebraic tricks that you can play with and all that kind of stuff. So if you're looking at this and you know some integration stuff and you're noticing like, oh, wait, he didn't cover this, that's because there's just so much to cover. So I distilled this down to a couple things that I think are important. If you want to explore some other integration techniques, even the ones revolving around U substitution, there are tons of different things that you can look at outside of this that will find more and more and more. So it never really stops, but this is the end for us for our course. Thanks so much for sticking through. Hopefully that went well for you. Get lots of practice on these. Integration is a ton of fun, especially U substitution. It's a really, really, really dynamic and useful process that we can use. Um, hopefully that's helpful to see. Thanks, everybody. Good luck with whatever else you're going to look at next. It's not another Calc 1 video, so good luck with that.